Welcome back, Theme Park Wizard. We're back with Orange Grove 55 for a special discussion with that breaking news banner on the city of Anaheim pushing for Disneyland to reopen after they didn't have such a good relationship in the past few years. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello, Orange Grove. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Ethan, for having me on again. It's always a good time, Mr. Theme Park Wizard. <laughs> oh, yes. But yes. So, yes, last week, <laughs> the OC mayors had a, a press conference right behind California Adventure saying they have to reopen because the, the money dried up. And I just found it <laughs> that kind of funny because, uh, you know, the East, they've had a, they made all, all these hurdles for the Eastern Gateway and the, in the uh, hotel. And now, uh, now they're probably like, oh, wait a second. Maybe we'll be a little bit nicer to Disney when this is all over. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I made a video on that the other day, too, about how, it, you know, the tone from the city of Anaheim has changed dramatically <laughs> from like just a couple of years ago when they were trying to build the Gateway Project and trying to get that new hotel built. Anaheim didn't care about jobs back then. They didn't care. They used every technicality in the book to make sure Disney couldn't build their hotel and to make sure Disney wouldn't build the Gateway Project. Now, suddenly Anaheim is all about the, uh, all about jobs. Suddenly they actually care about jobs, right? It's amazing. It's amazing what a couple years can do. Yeah, and they did this uh, even after Disney closed the, the ESPN Zone, the AMC Theater, and the uh, Rainforest Cafe, which results in the loss of those jobs as well. Right, exactly, exactly. They didn't care about jobs back then when Disney already closed all those locations and laid all those people off. You know, they didn't care back then. And, uh, you know, now suddenly they're, they're, they're hurting. You know, the city of Anaheim bottom line is hurting right now. They're not getting a lot. They're not getting the money they were getting from all the revenue from Disneyland being open. The tourism market has dried up. You know, Anaheim's really, really struggling right now. So they're panicking. And um, I hope, like what you said, what your intro, you, you mentioned that, you know, you hope that Disney and the city of Anaheim are going to have a better relationship now going forward. I hope so, too. I hope the city of Anaheim, it, it, I, you know, I don't want them to necessarily give Disney everything they ask for, mm -hmm. but at least don't throw every roadblock in its way when they try to do things. Because Disney has been trying to expand and improve the resort area for a long time, you know, when they tried to build Westcott in the in like the late 90s michael eisner got a lot of pushback from anaheim and then more recently like we mentioned with the new hotel and the gateway project it just seems like thing after thing after thing hopefully this was a wake-up call for anaheim and from mm. now on they're going to be more accommodating to disney when they want to expand so when we get that third park anaheim's like you know what go for it guys go for it <laughs> exactly yeah the whole hotel thing is particularly ridiculous because didn't they want them to shift to like 500 feet to the south or something because of their dress like what that makes uh, no sense like, that's like to find the the uh the like the tiniest possible thing <laughs> to put some kind of red tape in front of it. But yeah, now that what they say a hundred million dollar budget shortfall or something. Uh, yeah, it's a hundred million dollar short uh million dollar shortfall budget shortfall. Um so they're really, really hurting right now. Now the good thing, the good news is that the new mayor that we have, mm -hmm. um I, I, I can't I don't know, I can't pronounce his last name, but his first name is Harry. I think it's yeah, Harry Sidhu. I think it's Sidhu. Well, in my mind, it goes like Sidhu. Correct me from the comments below. I think it's like Sidhu. I think. Yeah, and and he's actually turning out to be a pretty decent mayor. To be mm -hmm. all, to be completely fair, like he seems to really, he seems to be more on Disney's side. Um, mm -hmm. compared to the last mayor. Oh, yeah, the last one was Tom a piece Tate. of crap. <laughs> piece of crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah don't, don't, hold, don't hold back, Ethan. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. <laughs> yeah, the last one was ridiculous. <laughs> he, uh, him and the, the leader of Unite, that union, Unite Here Local 11 or whatever, the Dr. Mar or Jose Marino or that Marino dude, those two were crazy people. Crazy. Not good, not good. So I'm hoping this is, this bodes well for Disney going forward um, with the city of Anaheim. Now, another thing that's really curious to come out of this, and like I want to say right off the bat, I don't 
want any businesses to go out of business. I don't want to mm-hmm. see anyone to have to close their to close their store, their mm-hmm. restaurant, whatever it is. That, that sucks. You know what I'm saying? That that's a bad situation. But the reality is, is that due to the shutdown, a lot of these businesses are struggling. Mm-hmm. So I'm very curious because a lot of these, a lot of these businesses now on like on Harbor Boulevard are going to be mm-hmm. more receptive yeah. to Disney. If Disney were to approach them, they would be more receptive to like letting Disney buy them out for the land. Mm-hmm. It would, they would, Disney would have a much better chance right now than they did like two or three years ago. Exactly. You know? Like for example, I heard, I think Captain Kids shut her permanently, I think. I heard on one of those forums. Did it really? Because it's a buffet style thing and I don't think they can come like off to it. So I think if Captain Kids is like on the verge of, on the verge of closing or, uh, or shut her permanently. Uh, uh, Wow. Well, yeah, buffet. The buffet is dead. I mean, with COVID, the buffet is dead. Who wants to do that? <laughs> which makes, which makes it even kind of almost like karma, I guess, because the Eastern Gateway. I know the harbor businesses were opposing that because they wanted foot traffic. Even though Disney wanted to offer to build like a steps or something so they can access the back of the restaurant, they still opposed it. And now they're going to go out of business anyway, most likely. <laughs> I know, right? I know. That, that's the craziest thing. Yeah, exactly. You said it, you said it right, Ethan. They're going to go out of business anyway. They, they could have disagreed to the Gateway Project a year or two ago. And it would have yeah. been, you know, whatever. And then now they're, they're still going to go out of business. So it's, it's, That it's actually crazy. might have brought, like, more foot track. Or like if, because, like I said, Disney wanted to put the extra, like, staircase or whatever to, to lease those businesses. And it probably would have made it, put an extra foot traffic over there because it's, it was a less dangerous way to go instead of crossing the street to, like uh, on Harbor Boulevard like that. Oh yeah, that 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 street corner when 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 all those families are coming across from like you know from Captain Kid and the IHOP mm-hmm. and they're trying to cross the street to get into Disneyland, it's dangerous. There's mm-hmm. there's dozens and dozens of people trying to cross that 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 street and there's a ton of cars and. Um, if for safety reasons, I think the bridge would have been a much better option, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. But I've always had a dream. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harbor Business Boulevard, but <laughs> Harbor Boulevard Business, but I've had a dream. If Disney can buy up all of that stuff and make, like, they can put their next hotel over there. Right, something. exactly, exactly. And I got into a little bit of a discussion with people on Twitter which is always a dangerous thing, you know. Just oh yeah, say <laughs> <So you're> one <laughs> wrong thing and then it feels crazy. And you get canceled, buddy. You get canceled. <laughs> you gotta be real careful, man. But I was, I was, <laughs> I was discussing, I was discussing, uh, you know, the possibilities of maybe like a third park, you know, and mm-hmm. um, the, you know, the Toy Story lot comes to mind. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty big piece of property that you can. Mm-hmm. And and a couple people told me like, well, that might be too small. What do you what do you think about that, Ethan? Do you think they could fit a third park on the Toy Story lot? You think it's big enough for a third park, like a DCA kind of style park? I think so, because I remember they're on the those the WDW forums. <laughs> they're having that discussion, and one person actually put the acreage of the lot, and okay. the acreage of the lot is actually bigger than Disneyland without like before Galaxy's Edge. I think it's about 79 acres or more, which is Disneyland before Galaxy's Edge was 69 acres. So you could put a whole Disneyland in that lot. And I don't like to me, if you look at it, it seems small, but I mean Disneyland is small like if you just made that a parking lot, it would be like it would look small too. Right. So you know if you if it really takes no these uh, creative engineers and artists to really kind of work in every nook and cranny and make every, like kind of if you can they can make it fit they can make things look bigger than they like the Matterhorn you know with forced perspective they, they can make it look bigger than these things actually seen but yeah that lot is actually about seventy nine acres and I think that's a without the expansion they the extra two hundred spots whatever they just made so I think they just made it a little bit bigger so I, they can definitely fit uh. A Disneyland and California Adventure style park, if they were if they were to do so, that's that's the way to go. I think I think if they want to build a third park, that's the way to do it. You know, mm-hmm. and then you can take like your idea 
of the Harbor B Boulevard businesses. And again, sorry, uh, Harbor Boulevard businesses, <laughs> <laughs> but you can, you can get rid of those and build like a new hotel or like a new, mm. a new kind of like a downtown Disney shopping area right there. Mm. And you use that to connect from the current resort, you know, to the third park, kind of like a, uh, like what it was like a stepping stone, <laughs> so to speak mm. to, the, to the new, to the new, to the new park. It could work. It could definitely work. You know, now's the time Disney need, really needs to look at that stuff because these, these businesses are probably looking to sell. You know, if you're a liquor store on Harbor Boulevard, right, for <laughs> example, you're a mom and pop liquor store and you're struggling because no one's going to your store and Disney approaches you, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you your, you know, we'll buy, we'll buy this off you for, you know, several million dollars. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's not a bad deal. <laughs> and even, like, even if, you know, Disney can still buy the things, but they don't have to, like, do something right away. But, it's, you know, it's, it's good to get it, like, you know, like you said, now at a discount. Even if they don't do anything for, like, 10 years, unless they own the land or own the property, so they can, at least they can say they hold it. And so when they have better, you know, better economic prospects and better budgets, they can actually build something. But definitely, yeah, buy the stuff at a discount and just hold it so later on you can build it uh and don't have to buy a premium price for it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Snatch it up now, like they did with the carousel um, mm -hmm. inn or whatever, right? They mm -hmm. they bought the land and now it's just it's just dirt basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and even the Toy Story lot, you know, was it was originally Disney bought that from it was like a farm. Like a strawberry oh, yeah. farm. And it sat empty for a long time and then they finally turned it into a parking lot. So they do that a lot. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You can buy the land now and let it sit forever and then and then decide when you want to build on it and they can even do something like um like again if the horror boulevard businesses want to play nice with disney they can do something where disney buys them but they can still operate and just like they kind of like lease it out so and they can pay rent to disney and then if they want to eventually want to build something again if they're still playing nice maybe they can reopen their business inside like on the ground floor of a new Disney hotel or something, or in an, or for a new shopping district. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they could definitely do that. Like, like the businesses like IHOP or something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and IHOP would do very, very well in, in like a um, like if you were to put that like in the bottom of like in the lobby area of a new hotel. Mm -hmm. or yeah, it'd be a know? great breakfast option before they walk over to the park. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Disney can work out something with that. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's a, that's a good, that's a great point. And I know what someone's, uh, some of you guys are probably thinking, they built a third park in the Toy Story lot. Where's everybody going to, everybody going to park? <laughs> I have a solution. They can, um, the Eastern Gateway, well, that's one project. But also, down the street is the Angel Stadium. And, you know, maybe Disney and Angels can work out some kind of, um, I know there's, they have a whole new development thing going there, but they can maybe lease out the, some part or like a parking lot or like a park, some levels of a parking garage for extra space and have like a kind of like the buses, the Toy Story lot to each of the parks. So you can definitely park. Yeah, 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 absolutely. They can definitely work something out. The parking, I think, is an easier, is an easier fix than, mm -hmm. than it is. Building the third park is the biggest hurdle. You know, because they're going to go through a lot of obstacles with the city of Anaheim in terms of mm. noise pollution, visual mm. intrusions, things like that. You know, that was a lot of the sticking points for Westcott was the big ball they were going to build. You know, we were going to get the big Epcot kind of ball. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, the issues the city of Anaheim had was, was how big it was going to be and where you can see it from everywhere. So the third park is the biggest obstacle. A parking lot is a pretty safe thing. In, in terms of, you know, the city isn't going to push too far, too far, you know, in terms of a parking lot. It's pretty safe. So they could pretty much find land um, nearby and, and build that parking structure without much drama, you know? Yeah. You know, so, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully they uh, take the time to snatch, snatch it up. Cause they obviously have some money. They're still working on some projects. Speaking of those projects, <laughs> What do you think of the massive show building for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway? It looks pretty impressive when you, I saw it in person driving back from downtown Disney. So, and about on pictures, it still looks pretty darn good. Yeah, no, it, it, it's cool, man. It's really, really cool. I'm super excited for Runaway Railway coming to Disneyland. 
um, we're not losing anything. We're losing the gag factory shop, which is not even really a loss because you know, they're going to build a Mickey and Minnie gift shop anyway. Oh yeah. Got to get out. money. Yeah, exactly. So we're not really losing anything. Um, yeah, the, the, the show building is going to be huge and I'm really, really curious because the Imagineers now are going to have to sort of, um, adjust you know because this building is going to loom over me over toontown right mm -hmm. so they're gonna have to figure out a way to, to to disguise it or hide it i'm really curious what kind of facade they decide to put on it and on top of that i would love to see with with all this new technology we got with like projection mapping and what have you i would love to see disney utilize that for whatever backdrop they have the new backdrop to cover the the mm -hmm. The building i would love for them to utilize projection mapping and have like a cartoon sun or a cartoon moon oh, yeah. and cartoon characters and and cartoon birds all on that backdrop and really have the hills and the and the and the scenery behind toontown come alive it would be so so great that would be like super cool like and then they just take their time at that point just cover it and make it indoors Right, yeah, exactly. But put it in a big dome, I and mean, you then you wouldn't even have to worry about the fireworks, you know. And yeah, or the sun fading, the paint, or anything, because it'll be closed. Yeah, put it indoors. Projection map the sky. You got it going. That's it. Like, the two town will be the coolest land <laughs> in Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then two town will be like, see, you suckers, you thought I was going away, but look at me now. I'm better than all you other seven lane. <laughs> look at me now. Well, and you know, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think it's just Disneyland and Anaheim in Tokyo that w the only two parks that have Toontown, right? Yes. Yeah, they only have two. And, uh, and, but Tokyo, well, Tokyo is outdoors, but Tokyo, Disney sees Little Mermaid Land is completely indoors and it looks super cool. Like, it's funny how they have the same thing that the jumping jellyfish like California Adventure does, but their jumping jellyfish is much cooler, in my opinion, because it's indoors and it's fully immersed and it's yes. like, and you go inside and it's like you're like under the ocean. So I'd much, like, it's much more entertaining to get on their jumping jellyfish versus our jumping jellyfish. Yeah, yeah, for, for like that whole theme of going under the sea, I mean, mm -hmm. pardon the pun, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> to go under the sea, um, I think they, that, you know, like Tokyo did it right, you know, in mm -hmm. making it like indoors. So you really mm -hmm. feel that immersiveness. Outside, you never really feel completely underwater. Indoors, you can create a much more convincing effect. Yeah, yeah. You definitely don't feel underwater when your the ride that is supposed to make you feel underwater is placed over water above right. Paradise Bay, and yeah. you're going higher instead of lower. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And hopefully that whole little area, not Mermaid, because I love the Mermaid Dark Ride. Yeah, Mermaid's um, cool. Yeah, Mermaid's great. Um, but I think that whole little back area with like the you know Paradise Grill, Goofy Sky School. And the jumping jellyfish. I think that's all kind of like time to take the bulldozer. Yeah, time to put Coco. <laughs> Coco goes right there. Yeah, put Coco there. I'm down for that. Put a Coco. Put a Coco dark ride. I think that'd be beautiful. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And speaking of mermaid, I don't know if you saw, but I guess somehow, for some reason, the original ride concept for Little Mermaid has been coming on. Has been coming online recently have you seen that um someone posted the video i guess uh, like i guess it came to the it was on some dvd like from 2004 or something but wow the tony baxter's original the original ride system for the little mermaid attraction and how vast and superior it was and then but i watched this animated video and it was pretty cool it was little mermaid it was supposed to be uh a Peter Pan style thing is you're gonna be suspended in a clamshell but going underwater and then going above the water water to the scene where and there's supposed to be a giant animatronic Ursula, you know, when she comes outside oh. in the storm night, and then you're supposed to go back underwater. And it's but I'll send it to you. It's super cool. It's like like super and it's like makes the it was like a true like e ticket attraction. <laughs> Still like mine, still like the mermaid we got now. We're like, wow, that was in the cars. That's, but I think they deemed it too scary for 
young children so they they went with something else but i thought that was pretty it was pretty cool yeah i remember seeing that actually i know exactly what you're talking about i remember seeing that years ago and it, it looks really really impressive I, I i i think i've seen that even before they announced this mermaid ride like you said mm-hmm. it was like 2004 so yeah it's older um and that's the issue kind of right with with seeing like like early concepts of anything is that they, mm-hmm. they're usually always better because these early concepts are done with the idea of like basically no budget, right? Like you, they just, yeah. just off the top of their head, their imagination, what can we come up with? And then, and then, then the bean counters get involved and then they start cutting and then they start telling them what they can and can't do. And then, you know, it's like Indiana Jones adventure as cool as that ride is. Right. Mm-hmm. If you look at some of the old concept art, it was actually supposed to house the Jungle Cruise, oh Indiana yeah, Jones, and like a um, like a like, mind train coaster or something, a mind cart. So I, I think like the Raging Spirits type of thing they have right. in pairs, yeah, exactly. And they they supposed, it was being supposed to be one large show building. I like, that was that would been super awesome. Yeah, yeah, and they cut it, and that's the thing. That's what always kind of. That's why I'm always like kind of hesitant to look at these like these designs. <laughs> yeah. They're it's always like, better, you know. You're like, dang it, yeah. <laughs> But the good thing is, at least with the Disney, that as they say, the ideas never die, so they usually kind of pop up in a different park or in a modified version. So that's at least, at least even if it's like a decade later, at least it still kind of pops up somewhere. So that's pretty. That's at least decent. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, there's been a lot of rumors for like years now. Um, like I remember making videos when I first started my channel like four years ago about indiana jones land coming to cal to uh animal kingdom i mean that's been a rumor for mm-hmm. a long time so maybe some of those unused concepts will come to animal kingdom eventually who knows you know mm-hmm. and speaking of that i just got this thought in my head but i don't know if you've seen the latest uh bsny newscast video where his walter nearing series where he's talking about Splash Mountain and how in Frontier and uh, Disney World how the Princess and the Fox doesn't make sense. So he, he thought they should change it to, you know, the how they're going to do the Western River Expedition. He thought he should they should make it to that theme of the original log film idea for the Western River Expedition. What do you think about that? I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, that would fit so much better for Florida. I think California... The Princess and the Frog theme is beautiful. It's a beautiful fit. But, I mean, it, it's really the perfect segue between, like, New Orleans and Critter Country because you kind of mm. have – you definitely have that New Orleans flavor with Princess and the Frog. But then you also have the Critter vibe with the mm. alligators and the animals, right? So it really mm-hmm. does fit both really well. In Florida, you don't have that because Florida's Splash Mountain is in Frontierland. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's a harder match. So, like – you know, Jack from DSNY, who does phenomenal content. I love his work. Um, I think it's a great idea to do like a Western River expedition. The only issue though with that is that Disney's obsessed with IP and Yeah, that's a completely original idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, (laughs) unless there's a Western River Expedition live action film or... Maybe like Home on the Range. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Get those animatronic cows in there. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, like loosely based on it. Yeah. (laughs) Just to please Chapek and friends. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And speaking of Chapek, the last few... uh, our last our earnings call, it seemed like he really took charge. I know before you're talking about how Iger is supposed to be speaking, and you're, it was weird how Chapek wasn't saying anything. But now, do you feel better now about Chapek as like CEO now that last time he kind of he was kind of doing most of the talking with the um, the earnings call, and he's kind of on the press releases. He's like more like assertive and upfront now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think he's really filling in the role now. I think he's starting to become the CEO. Iger, Bob Iger is taking more of a backseat, mm-hmm. and Bob Chapek is really becoming the CEO. I see a lot of articles now getting released, like, uh, you know, um, with, like, you know, like, Disney stock. Like, if you, like, watch, like, CNBC, mm-hmm. or, or if you go to thestreet.com, they'll talk about Disney, and they'll cite, you know, CEO, Disney CEO, Bob Chapek. There's no mention of Iger in the article. It's all Bob Chapek. He's becoming the CEO. Iger is definitely falling into the background and sort of blending in more. And that's how really how it should be. You know, mm-hmm. if Chapek's going to be the CEO, be the CEO. You know, 
And mm. um, Iger can be there. I mean, he, and he is, but I mean, he should definitely play uh, like a more of a behind the scenes role. So yeah, I'm happy. I'm encouraged by the fact that JPEG is taking a more visible role in the company. I want to see that from him. I want to see what kind of direction he takes the company, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm nice to see our head of parks and uh, parks, the, the, the parks division, Josh Damaro, our fan favorite. He has been spotted around the Disneyland Resort recently. And there's a, a lot of things been spotted around the Disneyland Resort, including the new entry or the new benches and chairs. See, that's actually a question. The benches and chairs and the all the stuff on the tram wrap, do you think that's a staffing issue? That there will be no tram service or a COVID issue? Because in Florida, they have no trams. They have the Skyliner and the monorail. But I think you'd have more of a chance of getting sick in the enclosed monorail or, 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 or maybe not the Skyliner because that's your own personal party, but definitely the monorail than uh, sitting on a tram. But I know monorail usually takes one person to, you know, run, to drive it. And the Skyliner is just your own thing, maybe a couple of people at the station. But the trams, I know there's usually two people, sometimes more on the front, like one in the front, one in the back, maybe sometimes the one in the middle of the tram so do you think it's a the staffing issue with that they wouldn't do the tram service or a COVID issue because that's open air yeah. versus the other two things are enclosed that's an interesting point ethan that's a very interesting point i really don't know like because you know i know disneyland has a lot of unions and there's a lot mm -hmm. of unions they have to like make deals with to bring those mm -hmm. particular cast members from that particular union back to work right so mm -hmm. it's possible it's very very possible and i'm not privy to this but it's possible that the union workers that do the trams and things like that may, maybe disney doesn't expect them to return right away because they're having trouble negotiating deals with their particular union that's definitely a possibility um i also see a definite possibility in it just being a COVID thing where they just want to kind of uh limit people sitting close together um, that's a tough one. That's a real, real tough one. I don't really know. I'm kind of leaning more towards it being a COVID thing, though. I mm -hmm. think that they just want to kind of have everyone out, like, not sitting next to each other, more, maybe walking if they feel mm -hmm. it's a little bit less of a risk um, than it is sitting sitting next to people and maybe they feel like the the capacity of the trams if they were to social distance people mm -hmm. like you know mm -hmm. put like two people in a row or something wouldn't even mm -hmm. be worth it you know mm -hmm. you wouldn't the line would be like three hours long for a tram <laughs> yeah but they figure you know what it's better to have everyone walk you know mm -hmm. it could be yeah. that too you know which is unfortunate for me because i know after a long day at the park side so looking i most look forward to sitting resting my legs on that two minute tram ride back to the parking lot oh i know i'm the same way like i sit on that uh, going home like on that tram i mm. sit on that tram and i think to myself the entire time going back to my car i think to myself i wish this tram could just take me all the way home <laughs> yeah, <same. laughs> like, i don't want to get up i'm like it's so it's it's very comfortable it doesn't seem it may not seem like it's very comfortable like i don't want to leave it yeah, like just get so just nice. get off get off the tram route and head on that five north and head head home and just drop me off at home. Dude. Yeah, just stay in the carpool lane and you know, well, I'll take a nap. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with the signs and all that stuff appearing, plus the music and all the refurbishment properties wrapping up, do you think some announcements happening soon, or what? What do you think is for the increase in construction or increase in like reopening prep? even though we still have no guidelines, do you think they know something that we don't know and maybe they're trying to prepare? Do you think they're trying to do it before the next, finish things before the next fiscal year starts? Or what do you think is going on there? Uh, I, think, I think Disney is kind of preparing for a reopen, but mm -hmm. I don't think that, I don't think that they know. Like, I don't think, like, I, I really believe that, that the negotiations with Newsom are so up in the air because of the act look okay here's the thing if disney felt confident that the parks were going to reopen they knew right if they knew mm -hmm. they had some sort of guidelines coming that just the public hasn't heard about but wait i thought we we're gonna have some very very soon right yeah very very <laughs> soon. it's been very very soon since june right <laughs> yeah exactly but if disney if disney really 
if Disney had inside information that this stuff was coming very, very soon, <laughs> then, I, then I don't think the Anaheim mayor would have come out yesterday. And I don't mm-hmm. think that we would see all this movement and these complaints, right, from mm-hmm. the city and from Disney. I really think that they just don't know. I think that they're preparing for a reopening in case they get the, the word that, you know, the guidelines. But I think that right now, I think they really just don't honestly know. And they're just going to kind of prepare and be ready for when Newsom finally does do the guidelines so they can get, kind of hit the ground running. But as of right now, I do not think that they have any idea what the, when the guidelines are going to come. Because the Anaheim city mayor, the, the Anaheim mayor came out yesterday and was furious. He was very, very mad. Mm. And you know what? If there were guidelines coming, if they knew guidelines were coming, he wouldn't have made that speech. Mm-hmm. There's no way. Cause, yeah, because even in like, one of those articles, they said uh, <laughs> that every time uh, Anaheim or Disney calls the governor's office, they don't get a they don't get a response, so that they haven't been talking to them at all instead of the dynamic talks that were happening, which is very interesting. Very, very interesting. Very, yeah, that is that is interesting. Yeah, the, the governor's office is basically like, don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is funny because I guess, and I'm going to City Walk later today to definitely check it out, but uh, Universal, I guess, I saw a video, has started playing their in-park music again so i don't know i feel like everyone's like kind of like i feel like it's, they're all in cahoots with some kind of plan maybe they'll just reopen and just reopen anyways and i mean really like, we don't need guidelines we'll just, <laughs> we have them we're safe i'm just gonna reopen yeah i mean need- i mean really what would what would they do if they did that what are they gonna do they're gonna send in riot police and remove people i mean they're not, you know what are they gonna do what 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 can they honestly do to, i mean if they were to reopen Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, if Disney really wanted, if Disney and Universal really wanted to play hardball, they could do that. They could just reopen it and say, you know what? We got, we're social distancing. We're requiring masks. There's no reason why we can't be open. Mm-hmm. And what are they going to do? Send the police to remove that? <laughs> that would be bad optics. That would be terrible. Uh, you know? <laughs> exactly. It'll turn to like a mini, mini fight between California and the theme parks. <laughs> Oh. Universal Blade Five, we don't pay our taxes to you, and then, and then, oh, then they'll get, that'll get them to open up real quick. Oh yeah, man! Once you start talking money, then they'll then they'll, <laughs> then they'll change their tune on the real. Stop guy. paying the taxes. Oh, oh okay, you can open them. Oh man, yeah, yeah, that was very interesting. And I don't know, so, but wow, so that means someone must have been lying. Mm, yeah, Mr. yeah, we'll see, Governor. Yeah, Governor Governor Gavin Newsom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Oh, but yeah, hopefully, uh, next week or the week after, you know, it makes oh, it's so frustrating because you you know you think it's coming soon, you're coming soon, and there's like always a setback, it's like two steps one, or one step forward, two steps back all the time. Yeah, it is. It is frustrating. But you know what? The good news is that Disney and Universal and SeaWorld, they're, they're all pr- they're all putting a lot of pressure on the state of California mm-hmm. to give the guidelines. I think that um, and look, I've said this before and I, and I stand by it. California is a very, 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 very blue state. They take a mm-hmm. lot of money from Hollywood. And that's whether you're a Republican, whether you're a Democrat, that's just mm-hmm. the reality of the situation. Mm-hmm. People like Bob Iger and people like Brian Roberts, they, ded- they donate money in droves to the Democratic mm-hmm. Party. They're not going to piss these people off to, to an extent where you know, they're going to re- cause a major, major rift. Eventually, with the pressure, I think Gavin Newsom is going to cave. I think he's going to say, you know what, fine. Get, I'll give it to him. Because these people, Hollywood gives so much money to that party. Mm-hmm. I just can't imagine Gavin Newsom just being like, oh, yeah, I don't care. With, if they're mad, you know, screw them. I, I can't see that happening. I, I just can't, you know. But we'll see. We'll see, you know. You know. And also, guys, if you like Disneyland Open, there's Reopen OC has a, a letter you can sign. I'll put it in the link below if you like to sign it. It takes just you just put in your name and press send and then just send the letter. I wonder how many people signed that. You signed that letter, did you? I, I did. I did. You too, right? Yeah, you, I, I think you yeah, I, I signed it. I actually signed it on two accounts. <laughs> I oh. went on one email and I went on another email and I signed. So signed it on like multiple accounts. And really pressure the newsome and any just anybody to 
opened up the theme park. We need some mental sanity at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I think it's time to open. And, and you know, we've seen that they can do it safely in Florida. Mm-hmm. You know, we've seen that they can do it safely in Paris. And, you know, they've done it in Shanghai. Mm-hmm. We can do it in Anaheim. People are people. And the COVID spreads the same way in Anaheim as it does in Orlando. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's time to reopen Anaheim. Obviously, I, I think that the masks should absolutely mm-hmm. be for the mask wearing should be mm-hmm. a strict policy and enforce it strictly social distancing obviously disney has like plexiglass everywhere you know and and do that i i just don't see the hold up i really don't see what's going on you know yeah because even in vegas you know the adventure dome which is an indoor that's right an indoor theme park that one's open so i feel like if an indoor theme park can open certainly all the outdoor ones can but so hopefully soon, voice your support. We're going to organize a rally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Open it up. <laughs> We're going all the way to Sacramento. Uh, <laughs> so help support us down below in the comments, because if you can open up downtown Disney, that's a much smaller area than the entire theme park. So I and also movie theaters in Orange County, since they moved to the next tier, they're open. They're open. So if you can send a box for two hours with stagnant air, I can get on <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and you know what? Uh, speaking of movie theaters, I actually ended up seeing. Um, I saw your review of Mulan. It was great, and I agree with you. I, I really yeah. enjoyed that movie a lot. Actually, that was a, that was a that was a fun movie. Yeah, I, I liked it. You know. I didn't feel like it needed Mushu or the songs because, you know, it's just a different tone than yeah. the animated version. Um, and apparently I saw, I don't know if you've seen those articles, but it, it looks like Mulan made more money than Tenet so far oh, based wow. on the premium, uh, the, the premium access. I think, I think they said at least, what, I think at least 14 million people bought the premium access, according to some of these articles I've been seeing. Uh, wow. That Mulan passed Tenet. So, what you guys think? About, but it's funny, everyone I talked to, not everyone, but most people I talked to didn't like it. And I'm like, oh. But then some people online liked it. So, I'm like, I don't know. What do you guys think of Mulan? Did you think it needed the music or the move shoe? Yeah, you know, it's funny because with Mulan, the, the animated movie, and this is one of the rare live action remakes that I actually liked more than the animated movie. I just mm. think that the subject matter, this particular story, I think works better without it being a musical and being more serious. It's a war movie, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like Rogue One kind of in a way. Like it's, oh, it's yeah, a war kind movie, of. you know? Yeah. It, it's definitely that war, that war vibe. It's more gritty. And I just think it works better. And I loved the actress who played Mulan. I think she did a phenomenal job in her role. Um, mm-hmm. And that guy, and you know, I don't remember his name. He, the guy, man, I totally forgot his name. But he was in the '90s Mortal Kombat movie. He did great. Um, there was like a, they had a lot of good actors and actresses in that film. I, mm-hmm. I just really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Now, actually. speaking of the actress of Mulan, I know. Uh, you know the boycott Mulan was trending because she said some statements. I guess in support of the pro, but the I guess the she was siding with the police or something about Hong Kong. Did that did that personally affect your viewing of the movie? Because I know some people have stopped watching it because of her uh, statement. Yeah, no, it didn't. If it didn't affect my view of the movie itself, because the movie is the movie, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna be. I'm going to go into the movie with, with, a, with an unbiased eye. Like, you know, mm-hmm. when, even if I don't like an actor or I don't like an actress, I'm still going to watch the movie for what it is. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I might not agree with her, her stance on what, you know, you just said. But as an actress and, 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 her, perfor- and, and, and her performance in Mulan, mm-hmm. I think she did good. I really do. Now, as a person, and, and politically, do I agree with her? No. But uh, but her but her performance in Mulan, I I think she did very well. I, I think she yeah, did very I think well. she did too. Yeah. She's like, and um, now obviously, and the, you probably saw the other thing about the Mulan about 
in the credits, they named that city, I guess that's home to concentration camps. I personally didn't know that until, I'll say after, until seeing the movie. But do you think, obviously, Disney probably would have known that before filming there. Do you think that they, like, didn't care or didn't know or, or was like, you know, maybe no one was going to notice <laughs> or maybe, like, it's just too great of a location. Maybe, or maybe, maybe China's, though, that's because, you know, China's kind of strict. Maybe that China's was like, if you're going to film right, you can only film in these certain spots and maybe that was the only spot they can film in. I don't know, but obviously Disney getting a lot of backlash for that. Do you blame Disney or, or what do you think? Well, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, like you said, I mean, it could have been the Chinese government restricting where they can and cannot film. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think it's, I do think it's a problem for sure. I mean, it's not, it's not good. They were filming on like those concentration camps. I think that's pretty gross. I mean, that's not, that's not a good thing, you know, I mean, and, and, but this isn't anything new really to Disney per se. Uh, Apple has a history of uh, issues in China with, you know, slave Mm -hmm. labor and people making, you know, people in China making their products. And, you know, I don't know if you heard of that Foxconn, facility where they were they were making apple products they had like suicide nets because people were like trying to jump oh yeah yeah you know so we have there's there's a history of 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 these corporations going over to china and and behaving very badly and it's Mm -hmm. uh it's a shame on disney and it's shame on every other company that does that so yeah i don't i don't i don't think that's a good thing at all i think that Disney probably knew. Disney's not stupid. They, 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 yeah, they knew where they were filming it for sure. They knew. <laughs> they were hoping they could put it in the credits and no one would know. And, and the tiny and the, fine print. <laughs> yeah, and people found out. And now they're mad. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you would have known that like before you watched the movie, would that stop you? Like, would you be basically would you be part of the boycott Mulan trend if you knew like one of those two things? Or would you still go into the movie like with an unbiased uh, well the creatively it wouldn't have changed my opinion of the film creatively when, whenever i like would when, you would have like would have like let's say you you heard about these things that would you like not even watch it in the first place or would you still check the movie out um i would have checked it out but i probably would have waited until it was oh. free in december because i think it's gonna be free in december yeah free in december. Um, yeah. yeah i probably would have waited um I, I do think that is an issue um I think that's a big issue, and I probably would have waited. I actually bought it like the morning it came out, so yeah, I think I bought it like at, days later. It was too late. Yeah, <laughs> I bought it like at like literally at like at twelve oh one, like midnight. I just I didn't watch. I watched it the next day, but I'm like, you know, what? I just want to just so I don't forget. I'm gonna buy it right at midnight to be part of the opening crowd. And yeah, then, yeah. I'm gonna rope <laughs> and, drop it. I wrote drop Mulan. <laughs> yeah, me too. I didn't. I didn't do twelve oh one, but I like. I woke up and I and I and I paid for it. Like, and I wake up early. I start work very early. I, I like six thirty in the morning, and I did it. Um, yeah, I would have changed my opinion, like because I feel like that's a big issue. Mm-hmm. But um, it was too late for me. Once I once I bought it, I bought it. So yeah, I probably would have waited. Yeah. But you know, it, creatively though, in terms of the film itself aside from all the filming issues and the issues with the actress, I still really like the movie itself. Yeah, but, the movie itself, I think, I thought was pretty good. Yeah. And all the actors and actresses. I like the the witch person, the, I forgot her name, but she yeah. turned into a bird. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Now, now, obviously, I don't know, you know, no one knows when the movie theaters are, are going to be fully open or when, or even if, how many people, how, when everyone's going to feel safe to go in one of those again. But I still think, no matter what happens, Black, because I know there's um, there's rumors of Black Widow being delayed again. And, you know, I'm a big Marvel guy, so I'll pay I'll pay $50 and see Black Widow on Premier Access. I just hope Disney puts it on Disney Plus and, or Premier Access or whatever and doesn't have to make me wait until, like, 2021 to see it. Because, you know, well, especially like with the MCE stuff, it's all connected. So they have all these movies lined up. We can't just keep pushing them back. At, well, at least I feel like you can't. Or else then it's going to like, it delays the whole thing. So I say we should, um, they should put it on Disney Plus. In fact, they should put it on Disney Plus tomorrow. Forget <laughs> November. Just put it there tomorrow. Get some extra cash because you know everyone would pay for Black Widow. 
much oh, more yeah. than they pay for Mulan. I mean, no kind of controversy. I feel like they get a lot of more, a lot more money. They probably make a profit instead of just break even. But what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I'm not a huge fan of the theater going experience just because every time I go to the theater, it just stresses me out. Like, I, there's always kids but talking in the theater. Someone's on their phone, probably, yeah. too. Exactly. There's people on their phone. There's people having yeah. side conversations. It just kind of, it, it's a distra- it's a, it's a distracting experience for me. So a lot of people love the big screen and the great audio. And for me, all that great audio and all that cool, the cool screen is offset by the fact that there's kids screaming and there's people kicking my seat. Yeah, that's so, the one I did, like kicking my seat. I, but I, no, I'm kind of ruthless. I just turn around and try to look at them. Like, you know what you're doing? <laughs> Like, unless it's like a little kid, I'm like, oh, yeah, like, like mother. That. Like, do you know what kids do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I, I'm the same way. If it's kids, like, it annoys me, but I'm like, all right, it's cool. You know, whatever, <laughs> do your thing. But yeah, I mean, if it's like adults, there's like even like, you know, young kids, like older <laughs> teenagers or something, I'm still, I'm like, come on, you know? But like, <laughs> um, yeah, I would rather watch it at home. I would much rather watch Black Widow at home. I'll pay the 30 bucks like I did Mulan and I'll watch Black Widow at home and be completely happy with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, and you know, if you add up the entire cost of everything, if you put the popcorn and the drinks, even if you made popcorn at your own house, if you got it's like Ralph's or something, you got like $2 pop, popcorn bags, it's much cheaper than getting uh, your movie ticket than getting your large popcorn and your large drink at the movie theater it's like way more than thirty dollars total even if you're just watching like by yourself the Mulan at home or the premiere access at home so the third dollar price point i think it's a pretty pretty decent deal i know a couple of my friends who was like thirty dollars that's way too much and i try to explain no if you get like five people together it's like six dollars a person and then with the popcorn and stuff it's much cheaper and they still like no no bad deal i'm like oh well I still think it's good. Yeah, I mean, even if you really, even if you just have two people, I mean, now yeah. with 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 movie prices, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like fifteen dollars a ticket. Exactly, it's like yeah. fifteen a ticket, and then you get a coke and a popcorn, mm-hmm. and you, I mean, you're 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 saving money, you know, watching yeah. it from home. I, I would much rather watch it at home. I, it's a more yeah. comfortable experience. Um, I've been watching a lot of movies lately. I've actually been I've been actually digging into Amazon Prime a lot lately. Do you have that? Oh. Yes, I do. And I must say, I just been, I just finished, I caught up and watched a new episode of The Boys yesterday on Amazon Prime. How's that Check one? it out. It's so good. It's superheroes, but it's superheroes as if they're like us. They're just living in the world like us. And they're not always nice. There's like, wow. they're pretty mean sometimes. So it's really interesting. You should definitely check it out. There's two seasons. Um, so the boys on Amazon. Comment below if you like the boys. It's so good. I think it has like a ninety-seven percent of Rotten Tomatoes. It's so good. I I I love I love Amazon Prime. I just started getting into it. I I watched both seasons of Hannah. I don't know if you've seen Hannah. Oh yeah, we actually my I watched that with my family, and that was a good show too. I was it's like, a great oh, show. Wow. She is badass, huh? She is yeah, she really ass. is. She just, I'm like, you know, she, she can be my bodyguard. You know, <laughs> Think Park, Think Park Wizard gets a super famous. I don't have Hannah as my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, go. Yeah, she so protect you. She, I love that show. And I thought the girl who plays Hannah was phenomenal. She's a great, great actress. Um, mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. And there's another show on there. It's called. God, it's, it's a date, and, and it's like 11-something, 1962. I don't know if you've seen that one. I haven't heard of that one. With the guy, the Franco brother. Um, I forgot his name, but something Franco. James? James Franco, yeah. And he goes back in time and tries to prevent the JFK assassination. That is a good oh, show, wow. too. Yeah, I'm, I'm only on season one for that one, but that's a cool show as well. I don't know, I don't I don't know if you know the title. Yeah, it's, it's, it's November... It's a date. It's November something mm-hmm. 1960 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's great show. Yeah. You know, um, which is actually the, another idea here because you no know, Amazon Prime is like the only streaming service where you get other stuff. Obviously, you, you have Amazon Prime, so you can order stuff. Now, I wonder if Disney Plus would, would make it more appealing if they kind of like you can order stuff from Shop Disney. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, yeah. Amazon Prime, you can, it's Amazon Prime. Of course, you can order, but also watch TV. But 
if you can like maybe they combine shop Disney with Disney Plus and you get like a as part of the subscription service and you can like get two day delivery or something or some 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 kind of kind of Amazon competitor like that since Disney sells stuff too Netflix doesn't sell anything but Disney can do that because they sell stuff too like Amazon does yeah no that, that's definitely a possibility I can see Disney diving into that I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't mind and I, I've long said this I wouldn't mind if Disney consolidated everything mm-hmm. and like your annual pass um your annual pass your d23 membership mm-hmm. and even your Disney plus membership are mm-hmm. like bundled and you mm-hmm. pay like you know whatever it is a month and you and it's all three and just call it a day. I wouldn't mind that. That would be that, that would be fine pretty, with me. That'd that be cool. Be pretty, yeah, that'd be pretty decent. Pretty you don't have to keep track of everything. It's all in one place. Yeah. I like that. Listen yeah. up, Bob Chapek. Listen yeah. up. Come on, Bobby. Hey, we'll do brunch, Bob. We'll talk about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you clearly live in the like near Ventura. I know you just sold your house in Ventura, so you're living somewhere around here. We're in the valley, so we can drive to you. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly like yeah yeah. it'd be great it'd be great i would love that i would absolutely love that yeah and uh now what do you guys because uh lastly here i heard i guess of a rumor it's not really a rumor but it was an idea that i don't know if you want to watch you watch grace randolph on uh, youtube i i'm I'm not a regular viewer but i have seen her stuff yeah (laughs) because she always talks about how disney Disney Plus should add a, a Fox division, like uh, on their streaming th- on their site, to get more subscribers and just to get more uh, people. What do you What do you think of that? Do you think Disney Plus, Disney Plus should have their own like separate Fox tab? Um, I think Disney, to be quite honest with you, and I could be wrong on this. I think Disney is sort of trying to take the Fox properties and mm-hmm. find other homes for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so I don't think they would do that. I don't think they're going to double down on the, on the, on the Fox brand. I think they're going to take the family friendly Fox stuff and make them Disney eventually. Mm-hmm. Like they kind of did with touchstone, you know, Roger Rabbit was a touchstone movie originally. Now it's, yeah, Pictures. I saw that. Yeah. When I watched it, I'm like, Oh, well, it's a touchstone. And I'm like, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, and then Nightmare Before Christmas, it was also a touchdown. Now it's Walt Disney. I think they're going to do that with, with Fox, sadly, because Fox has, is, is a historic movie studio, you know? Mm-hmm. I think they're going to take the stuff that fits the Disney brand. Like, I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll bet you that um, Avatar will eventually be Walt Disney Pictures. Ooh, Avatar, be because, because they, have those, they have Avatar in the parks. Mm-hmm. So I think they're going to do that. The more... Um, like adult stuff, like obviously like Family Guy, you can't put mm-hmm. Walt Disney in front of that. Yeah, so. Walt Disney Studios. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, USA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not gonna happen. So they'll keep that the Fox stuff attached to the the edgier Fox properties. Um, but I think the family stuff, some of the animation, even they're gonna find other homes for it. I think Fox is gonna be a very small studio. I don't think I don't think Disney's very serious about keeping Fox as a brand. You know, they like the movies, but the mm. movies aren't going to stay Fox if that makes any sense. You know? Yeah, yeah, that makes it funny how they kept uh, pushing all their own movies back, but they always use they're using the the Fox movies as like guinea pigs and like New Mutants, for example, was at least in theaters, and they had no intention of like kind of putting that back some things they just want to throw the fox movies away into the movie theaters and while they're pushing their own movies back um during the pandemic <laughs> for fox <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely and and you can you can kiss the days goodbye where marvel uh was making fox movies like th- those days were oh like, yeah those yeah over, no, you know no more x-men in the mar of mar fox and x-men by the OB. Kevin Feige's X Men. There's a new, there's oh. a new, there's a, there's a new sheriff in town. His name is Kevin Feige. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Man. Last time I said last last time, but I just remembered the Mandalorian trailer came out. Yes. What did you think? I didn't see you post anything about it. Yeah, no, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Visually, it was beautiful, which I expect mm-hmm. from Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I I'm really curious who that woman is. Um, I think she's played by Sasha Banks. 
yeah the um, with the black hoodie yeah, yeah. and i'm really cur- i didn't even know she was in it and i'm like i didn't i don't follow wrestling Mm-hmm. So when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, is that Rosario Dawson? Is that Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, and I'm like, maybe that's gonna be Ahsoka, but then people were telling me, no, that's Sasha, Sasha Banks. She looks dope. I think she looks awesome. I can't wait to find out what character she is. She's obviously I think she's obviously a Jedi because yeah, she looks like a Jedi. She looks like she's ready to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And well, and she's she's with WWE, so she probably could kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see I probably I bet you her and Gina Gina's character as Gargan because she's also a WD WWE person of Gina Car- Caro Caro. What's oh yeah, name? yeah. I feel like they'd get like they're probably setting up the stage for them to get in some kind of fight, it's like a true WWE fight. <laughs> it'd be WrestleMania on the Mandalorian. Oh, it'd be great, dude! No, I'm really excited about Mando season two. I'm really excited. I love Mando season one. It really <laughs> felt like um, it felt like the old school trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a little grounded, a lot of practical effects, things like that. Mm-hmm. But uh. I'm super excited for it. I want to see Baby Yoda in action again. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot. Yeah, I miss my Yoda. Yeah, yeah. I miss the baby. I miss him too. Baby Yoda for president, man. 2020. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, man. Now's merch is everywhere. Everywhere you look, you see a Baby Yoda. I know he's everywhere. I know. I haven't gotten a Baby Yoda yet. Have you bought a Baby Yoda? I haven't. Maybe next time I go to Downtown Disney, they put that. They turn the Wonder Ground into the. A Star Wars Galaxy's Edge trading post. Maybe I'll buy a baby, a baby Yoda from there. Yeah, and 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 you know, real quick before we go, I, I you know, a lot of people are complaining about the Wonderground thing, and it sucks. Like I loved Wonderground. I think it was an awesome, mm-hmm. uh, awesome gallery, and they had great art. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, people I think kind of have to have a little bit of patience because you have to understand that the parks are not open. Mm-hmm. So all the stuff from Galaxy's Edge, they got to sell it somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And Unfortunately, they got to adapt, and if the parks aren't going to be open, this is what we get. <laughs> now, <laughs> unfortunately, I heard, you know. <laughs> I heard two things about the Wonderground. One of them um, was they did that primarily because the artists they weren't getting any more art um, from the artists, so there's gonna is either gonna be like an empty, half empty store until they got more pieces of art for a while, or they can convert it to something. But then uh, another thing is, or for the people complaining, I know probably some people are like, oh gosh, another Star Wars thing. But I know a lot of people <laughs> don't like, they just put like the drapes or those rags over the underground sign to make it, to mark like a, the marquee entryway. Um, what do you think about that? Um, think- yeah, I, I did see that actually. I did see it. It's a bad show. I mean, yeah. I, I'm actually forg- I'm a- I'm actually forgiving of of, of Disney to um, I'm forgiving of Disney of putting the the Batu stuff in there because I understand mm-hmm. that you know the Wonderground sales will probably dry it up like you said mm-hmm. and the artists and then they need a place to sell the park stuff. Mm-hmm. I totally get the reasoning behind the move. Yeah, but what I don't get is like putting those dirty like that. that <laughs> <laughs> the rags that they use to like when I go to when I go to like the Diffy Lube and they change my room. <laughs> and like the dirty these dirty rags just like thrown over like come on Disney you know, that's so kind of remind me of remind me of in 2018 when they converted the pizza port temporarily and put the pizza planet overlay and they put the alien sign oh. with the, it was like half over the the pizza port sign it reminded me of something like that yeah like a little bit worse because i feel like i mean i could have done that i they should have saved me i could have <laughs> done that overnight i could have gotten some rags and like hey disney give me a hundred dollars i'll make your new sign for you yeah <laughs> yeah it, look, it looks terrible you know they could have just uh put like a scrim over it like a perfect like those scrim the construction scrims yeah they, they can put nice designs on those scrims they can put like they can put like star wars trading posts like a temporary sign that looks decent but they have the rags so that uh, that was quite interesting it's funny man, man well thank you for joining on this nice saturday afternoon of september 
It's my pleasure, Ethan. I love coming on your channel, buddy. And uh, I wish the best of luck, man. You're almost eight eight hundred subs, dude. We got to get you to we got to get you a thousand, man. Yes, two hundred more. So everyone, share the heck out of this video and channel, and tell everyone that you love me and that you think you love me too. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And subscribe to Orange Grove because he's almost at the big three thousand. Yes. Boop, boop. Boop, 3K, baby. <laughs> 3K. We're going to throw him a party when, when he gets to 3K, so you can help him get there. With Baby Yoda cupcakes and everything. <laughs> exactly. And as always, have a fantastic day. Bye now.